Hello everyone. I am coming to you live from my husband's office today. So it is a new background, new environment, and the lighting is not great. I do have a new light that I'm going to be putting up very soon. So thank you. Thank you, Christy Devine for sending that over. I promise I will get it uh, all set up soon. So today we are talking about chemotherapy. Um, so I wanted to share my experience about, um, you know, chemo prep and um, kind of like how I was told that I needed to do chemo and why I made the decision to do chemo because I feel like it's really important and because I didn't understand it um, the way that I do now until my oncologist explained it to me. So I wanted to share the story with you all so that way uh, you understand it in the way that I do. And hopefully it helps you in your journey in deciding um, what treatment is best for you. Okay, so let me take you back to August uh, 12th, I think it was, when I met with my oncologist for the first time. And he explained what I'm going to share with you right now to me. So he sat me down and he said, I want you to think of your cancer like a weed, right? Like you had this tumor and it's like this big weed that you had. So imagine your body is a garden um, and you have this area where you've got like this weed or this concentration of weeds and it's getting like uprooted. So think of your surgeon as the gardener, that he is removing the weeds for you. And in the process of, you know, removing the weeds, we can remove all of the visible weeds. So all of the visible weeds would be like my tumor, which was the size of a racquetball in my colon. Awesome. So he drew, the, drew a picture, which I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but um, I'm going to just try to, you know, help, help you out. So let's imagine where I have, oh, there, here they are. All these areas here, maybe this is like the weeds, right? I need to look at this because I'm blind. Um, even though they look like cute little flowers. Imagine these are weeds. Surgeon takes them all out. He can only take out the ones that he sees. So, however, you can't see them because of the lighting. But imagine there's these like little weeds though in the process that haven't sprouted. That you've got these little areas of, in this case, cancer. They're little cancer weeds. You can't see them, but they are all over the place, right? So when I had my surgery, they removed the colon. Well, not all of it. They removed a foot of the colon and they also removed um, a sampling of lymph nodes afterward. Um, sam a sampling of lymph nodes that was actually like 25 of them. And of the 25, six were cancerous. So what that means is that within my garden, there are little spreckly weeds, weed seeds that we can't see. So cancer, essentially, what it's going to do... Sorry, is guys, that was chemotherapy, not cancer. Take the big Roundup sprayer and freaking wipe out all of the weed seeds. Game over. So um, that's why I decided to do chemotherapy is because I have still cancer cells in my body. And I had a CT scan, so we know that it's not in any organs, but they're there and we need to wipe them out. So what happened was um, we talked about chemotherapy and we talked about the next steps and we talked about how of everyone, I'm going to share this with you too, of everyone in life who gets cancer, there is a certain percentage of people. I'm trying to do some math here. It's not my favorite subject. There are people who will get cancer and they will have surgery and they will be in the 65% of people who walk away and never see the cancer again. So like maybe they go to meet with the oncologist and the oncologist says, hey, you need chemotherapy. And they're like, F you doctor, I'm not doing that. People like my dad. Um, and they leave. Well, actually he probably wouldn't fall in, into this category. So never mind. People, 65% of people will not have treatment and never see the cancer again, right? So that's crazy to think. Like I could just tell the doctor F off and I'm never going to actually have this cancer again. 65%, that's actually pretty good. It's good, but it's not great. Like 65, that's still, that's like D territory, right? Like if you remember school, like back in the school days, mm -mm, I don't like that. However, 
there are people who will then get chemotherapy. So like this 65 is people who don't get the chemotherapy. And then this is people who do get chemotherapy. This is like the remaining group of people. Of those people who get chemotherapy, there are still people who will uh, pass away, of course. We know this because we know that people get uh, chemotherapy and still have, you know, an, we'll call it ineffective result or death. But there are also an equal number of people who get chemotherapy and have a positive result and never see the cancer again. So 65% of people, 65 of people will get it. They won't get any treatment. The other 35% of people will get the treatment and pretty much half of them will do really well with the treatment and come out like a rock star and, um, you know, be boogieing all the way home like it's 1999 and the other folks aren't going to do so well with it. That's just kind of the reality of it. So I think it's important to share that information because my oncologist was telling me that um, he went to a bookstore one time and there was a person who wrote a book called How I Cured My Colon Cancer um, Without Chemotherapy. And of course, he's like, hey, I'm going to read it. I'm an oncologist. So he read it and the guy was talking about how he did like this diet and it helped him and, you know, he didn't need chemo and, you know, you don't need chemo. And that's why, right, is because he killed himself with food. Now, I... I'm not downplaying at all the value of good nutrition when it comes to any kind of cancer prevention or chemotherapy, because if you think about it, like we all know that there are foods out there that have phytonutrients that help prevent cancer, right? We all hear about cancer fighting foods and how there are foods that are good for us. And then that there are things that are not good for us that we know do pre produce cancer like carcinogens. And so what we want to do is spend more time in the area of doing the good things that are going to get us into the positive zone. Sorry, I had a little interruption there, guys. So I was just saying, I want to do the best thing that I can to give myself the most positive potential outcome. So the breakdown I had was that 65% of people uh, who don't get chemo, just have their tumors, tumors removed, still do okay. But having the chemo means your overall success is up to 85%. And I'm not a doctor, I'm just explaining how this was explained to me, which I thought was really helpful in understanding my cancer. So I'm still researching holistic practices. I think nutrition will be part of that. And once I've got some definitive answers, I'll let you guys know. Thanks all for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this and hope it was helpful. Have a great day.